Hello, uh, people on the internet. I am Michal Koutný. Uh, I, I am going to present you my talk, which is called Poking into the I.O. Controller. And uh, I work in the core kernel team on C groups. Uh, so I want to mention that I am not expert for direct, for I.O. control exactly. So, and this will be more practical talk. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So I, I skipped into the interaction. Yeah. So first, uh, I will show, tell you short interaction. Uh, then we will look at how to configure uh, the I/O controller. Actually, what should be our expectation be like? Uh, then I have the part where I will present some experiments and results from them, and uh, then we will end. Yes. So. Uh, uh, the, the the motivation for this talk was uh, actually a bug report where uh, we, usually, we we know that the configuration of IO controller is difficult uh, but uh, so it might not be done cor correctly on the first try uh, because yeah it's difficult but he actually some mm, some the, 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 it was discovered that some uh, cases uh, are not properly controlled. So it was surprising even for us. Uh, so I thought it would be useful to have some kind of talk where we summarize how, how to configure it and uh, how actually the system behaves uh, when, when we apply some IO control. Uh, this is uh, actually uh, connected with uh, the talk from uh, Jan Kara where he covered the theory so I assume you either saw that talk or that you can uh, watch the recording later. Uh, I will just uh, summarize here shortly. Uh, well, yeah, well, well, the terminology note, uh, uh, Jan uh, mentioned uh, various controllers. Uh, I, now I would like to remap your thinking and my thinking uh, where uh, uh, what he referred to as controllers, I would uh, refer to as policies, uh, which will be uh, important later in the talk. So, but uh, basically it, it's the same thing what we are talking about. Uh, so there are, uh, here, here are listed the policies. Uh, there, there is the uh, IOBFQ weight policy, the proportional control policy. Then there is the throttling policy. Uh, Represented, yeah. The, the the names I listed here are actually the names of the C group uh, file system attributes where through which you configure it. Uh, then there is the I O weight attribute, which is for the I O cost based uh, proportional control. And then there is the I O latency policy uh, uh, for for the summary. Uh, here uh, I am talking. Uh, about, uh, exclusively about uh, C group uh, version 2, uh, why uh, will be explained later. And the experiments are also uh, focused only on the proportional control, uh, not uh, on the other policies listed above. Yeah, so uh, how to configure the system? I will start uh, from the things uh, that you should do at the beginning and uh, uh, go to the things that you can do later, perhaps at runtime. Uh, so first, uh, you should uh, choose a suitable file system because uh, because IO control is uh, tightly bound to inodes and uh, accounting uh, must be sub or the IO accounting must be supported in the file system. Uh, to have a uh, control even for write back. Uh, so that wasn't, uh, historically that wasn't the case, uh, but uh, it evolved and nowadays, and nowadays means upstream or C15 SP3, the, the, the most, rec the, the, all the recommended uh, file systems, uh, ButterFS, X4 and XFS, all uh, support the proper accounting of the IO. So that's basically, your choice which file system you pick. Uh, then you have file system. Uh, so you have file system. And uh, uh, you uh, you need also to switch to the CUP v2 or the so-called unified hierarchy 
in order to have a proper control even for the right back IO uh, because uh, you uh, the, the right back uh, is uh, decoupled from the writers and uh, it goes through the page cache so you need the same uh, same hierarchy both for the IO and for the memory controller so you need the unified hierarchy for this uh, this is uh, already the default in in tumbleweed and uh, in slash uh, you have to switch it uh, explicitly by kernel command line and it gives instruction to system d because it's actually system d who maintains the hierarchies uh, uh, to to use the unified hierarchy uh, yeah and uh, in slash currently it's not the default and uh, it's like we recommend the switch to the unified hierarchy only in the cases where you need some features of uh, CU control controllers that are not available uh, in V1, which in this case would be the write back uh, accounting and control. Then uh, you have booted the system, and uh, you then you need to uh, pick a, a IO scheduler. Uh, here uh, I have list I have three three bullets and uh, basically uh, th 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 these bullets represent the policies. The first is the proportional policy based on the BFQ scheduler, and you must use a BFQ scheduler so that you can use this policy. Uh, this uh, this can be changed at runtime. Uh, each uh, device has a respective uh, uh, CSFS file where you can uh, see what uh, schedulers are available and you can switch it. Uh, the recommended uh, way <laughs> recommended way is uh, to uh, do it in UDEF rules when the device appears. And uh, currently, I think uh, there is some default uh, default policy, uh, not scheduling policy, I mean default um, SUSE policy uh, on which devices have uh, the BFQ controller enabled by default and which not, but I think it's still uh, a matter of some discussions. So if you want to use uh, the proportional control with BFQ, you should check what is actually the scheduler and switch it if, if you need, need, need. Then there are the uh, uh, throttling and IO latency policies that basically require no uh, no system-wide uh, uh, configurations or adjustments so these are simpler and the io weight uh, proportional the the cost-based uh, proportional control uh, it uh, must be also enabled uh, enabled on the root level uh, but I, i'm not going to discuss this here uh, because i i, I for, later i will focus on bfq controller and uh, the base model uh, is quite exclusive with that uh, so and want to keep the configuration simple so we focus only on the bfq controller so uh, we we have the uh, control setup and then we need to design our hierarchy uh, it was uh, this or uh, I, can't, I don't know. Who, sorry, uh, no refer, no direct references to, to, to the second to the previous talk. Uh, uh, the uh, proportional control happens uh, on the on each level between siblings. So if uh, we have the hierarchy like on the diagram here, uh, where we have the root C group and uh, four uh, uh, four uh, descendant C groups uh, with the weights as they are listed here, uh, we should not be surprised that if uh, IO is issued only from the C group B and C group C, so despite the C group C has nominally higher weight than the C group B, it would be treated according to the weight of uh, its parent C group A because the competition here happens at the first level of the hierarchy between A and B. And in that case, uh, the A has a, a lower weight. Uh, so the, uh, 
we, and we have to therefore we have to think about how we design our hierarchy uh, and how we assign the weight to achieve our goals. Uh, I said that the settings or the competition happens between uh, siblings, but there can be also like non C group siblings. There can be individual threats or uh, processes inside one C group, and there it is possible uh, to adjust their schedule uh, the I the I.O. priorities uh, within the C group, uh, but uh, this only applies to the basically direct I.O. and uh, the write back, write back can't be controlled this way. And also uh, only the BFQ scheduler supports uh, this uh, fine tuning, I would say. So uh, there are some specifics where this can be used. Uh, with, in respect with in respect to the higher the limit the throttling uh, policy uh, it behaves uh, quite one well, like one would expect hierarchically uh, so like the the strictest limit in the ancestors applies about and the uh, throughput of all uh, sub tree is aggregated uh, aggregated when it's evaluated Then the last step uh, is to uh, put our processes into the hierarchy and uh, assign proper attributes. So the simplest way, uh, perhaps, uh, is uh, to uh, set up the set up the uh, um, system D unit properties, which can be done either uh, statically in a unit file or uh, ad hoc uh, for commands uh, that we can start with the system D run utility. And uh, for the list of the available properties, uh, actually how, how, how these various policies are mapped to uh, system D properties, uh, it's documented in the manual page, uh, system D resource control. So this looks like everything is uh, nice and shiny, but uh, there is actually a problem with the I await attribute because there is only one uh, system D property I await uh, meant to abstract it away from the user. What uh, what actually what mechanism is used for the proportional control? Uh, whether it is I await or I O B F Q wait. So this uh, depends on the system D version that you happen to use. Whether uh, this works or not for B F Q. Uh, currently, I think. Uh, the version that we have uh, in C15 SP3 is the lucky one where uh, both the IO weight and IO BFQ weight works. And uh, there is another catch that actually the accepted weight for BFQ uh, controller is just in the range uh, 1 to 1000, while that the normal weight range uh, for not only I.O. controller, but uh, also other controllers is 1 to 1,000. And the default is 100. So uh, the, the default is like logarithmically in the middle of the range. And uh, the BFQ uh, limitation is rather arbitrary. So one has to take that into account when configuring some extreme ratios. And uh, actually, this is also ongoing work to somehow uh, consolidate the APIs. And uh, unfortunately, if you use the most recent systemd, which would be per the tumbleweed, uh, the systemd tries to scale somehow the weights for the BFQ, and then it uh, messes with the 100 default. So currently, uh, you should check what was actually configured uh, uh, if you use tumbleweed. Uh, there is one possible workaround uh, how to set the weight the way you want it. Uh, but using the system directives. Uh, the first one, you have to enable the IO accounting because if you don't uh, ap apply any other uh, IO attribute, the system D wouldn't know if it should enable the IO control for the unit. So you just enable the IO accounting uh, to, to have the IO control enabled for the C group of the unit. And then um, it's, uh, yeah, it's work around the heck uh, in the exec start pre. Uh, command you manually write into the respective C group. Uh, so this is a workaround when you can't rely on um, on which uh, system version uh, would you be running. 
uh, yeah, but it's. I hope that eventually we will be able to somehow, even with upstream, uh, agree on what would be the good API, and uh, it should be simple, as simple as setting just the one I await attribute. So this is basically it. What uh, what you need to configure the I/O controller, and uh, now we can move on and uh, uh, somehow set up our expectations. Set our expectations. Uh, yeah, when talking about uh, proportional I/O control. Uh, so uh, this actually applies only when the device throughput uh, is saturated. Uh, that is, uh, I, I have two examples here where basically the weights wouldn't be honored. Uh, there, in the first example, there are two uh, C groups, A1 and A2. And uh, unfortunately or fortunately, depends on point of view, uh, they are issuing the IOs alternatively Let's assume this is the direct I/O, so the I/O never never meets uh, uh, inside the controller. So they would uh, they uh, they would uh, share even even shares of the I/O bandwidth, even though we may, might have configured some weights for them. So mm, unexpected, expected or unexpected result. Uh, it might be even more uh, complex when in the second case when we have C groups B1 and B2 uh, with Dots, I dots, uh, I marked uh, writes into the page cache, so it's not actually hitting the actual device. While in B2 we use still the direct I/O, so then uh, there is still for B2 initially there is no competitor, so it would use the full bandwidth. But then at the end, uh, with the equal sign, I marked the write back I/O, which uh, might be even more intense uh, than the single writer in B2. So there, again, it wouldn't honor the weights exactly as they were configured. So one have to be mindful about this, that the weights don't apply always. Another thing that uh, comes into effect is uh, dirty throttling. Uh, <laughs> When there is a writer uh, going through the page cache, so basically it only dirties the page in the in the page cache, and uh, the writing to the device is uh, is uh, deferred to later moment. And uh, of course, when there is a big amount of uh, dirty pages, we have to start writing uh, into the device, and uh, this can be configured uh, with uh, th some thresholds. That basically, we want to we want to attain or attain attain and keep certain level uh, of dirty pages, and uh, then if we are going above the if we, or if if we have too too many dirty pages, uh, we slow down the the writer. Uh, I mean, the dirtier the dirtier. That's better explanation. We slow down the dirtier, and if we are below the limit, we can we can. Um, we can let the dirtier run free. Uh, so, so, so far, I mentioned only the, like one threshold limit, but actually, we can have uh, memory limits on C groups, and then the the, the dirty threshold is uh, recalculated uh, based on the available based on the memory limits, and in that case, the the the, the, the dirtiers would be uh, throttled based on the available memory for the C group. So basically, if we have a small small memory C group, uh, it would get smaller share, eff effectively smaller share of the write back I/O than the bigger C group. Despite we applied no proportional I/O control. So and again, it's a factor we have to take into account. Uh, when we are planning to use proportional I/O control with I/O control, then uh, so far I mentioned only one weight, but actually uh, the weight uh, 
this is the easiest setup when we set uh, the weight for the C group and it applies to all devices, but uh, it can be actually configured also a pair device, uh, which is like spe special case of, 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 of the generic setting. And in that case, uh, we should uh, be uh, aware of the devices for what uh, we configure the weights uh, or the attributes in general, because there are devices uh, uh, that are stacked on up on the real devices uh, and they, do, they don't do real IO scheduling. So we have to uh, configure it for the actual physical devices. But uh, somehow, uh, if you use the system D, it takes care of this and uh, maps it to the, it, or it should map it to the lowest uh, device in, in the stack so that it applies to the physical device. And also there is the case of things like uh, battery FS rate, uh, where you have to be aware or what devices you actually want to configure it explicitly. And another case I have in this uh, category for related to devices is that uh, the devices have, the hardware actually differs in uh, what level of parallelism it allows and uh, how, how big are its internal buffers. And that also affects the, the dynamics of uh, how the proportional IO control behaves. So, you, you you should somehow calibrate your configuration for your particular hardware or or recalibrate if you if you change it then uh this is some may come as a surprise uh but it uh i guess it makes the implementation much simpler that the proportional control uh doesn't or no, I want to say there is just one weight uh, parameter, both for read and write. So read and writes can't be uh, uh, configured to be handled differently. Now, uh, uh, also I listed that there are multiple policies and now is the time for the importance in the naming, like I wanted to name it policy. Uh, if you have multiple policies, uh, they can basically fight against each other. And uh, as also Jack uh, explained, uh, they have some assumptions how the system behaves. And if uh, another policy interferes, uh, it wouldn't achieve the results. So if you, if you design uh, the IO control, you should stick just to a certain policy uh, in a given subtree, I would say. Then, uh, yeah, the, uh, in, in some sense, uh, the weight uh, of the upper portion IO control can be thought of as guarantees or relative guarantees that if I set uh, certain, some big weight to some unit, uh, I should think about it as a guarantee that uh, it will get the bigger proportion of the available bandwidth always. But that's not um, the true because as I told previously, there are some other factors uh, that may make uh, honoring the weights difficult. And actually, the, the device throughput is not the only shared resource. Like the, the file system itself is a shared resource. So uh, the, the weights uh, would not be honored if, uh, for example, there is one transaction happening from, uh, sorry, uh, the, the transaction, for example, can be the, like the non-parallel uh, resource that uh, once you've had to wait for, and then the, the weights uh, configured cannot be exercised for it. So uh, that's another case uh, where you should not rely on the weights as guarantees. Uh, I think the, the last um, uh, Mm, gotcha. A bit is that uh, you 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 may employ I/O controller uh, to control the swap I/O, uh, but actually some of the policies uh, are a bit more clever about this that they don't uh, control the swap I/O directly, uh, but um, not all of them. And if you have a need to control I/O, it typically means that it's too late. Uh, in your design uh, that perhaps uh, your memory is under provisioned and you should check your available memory or the memory limits 
uh, because uh, trying to fix it uh, by modulating the swap I.O. Uh, is not a good idea. You may run into priority inversions or some unexpected OOM events. So uh, don't use I.O. control for swap generally. Now, uh, that was the like uh, practical theory <laughs> uh, where I try to summarize uh, uh, what should we expect and not expect. Now is the part about experiments, the actual poking into the controller. Uh, this is the part that is not in the, in the uh, article in the proceedings. So uh, this is new in the slides. Yeah. So the, the space, the exploration space, I realized that it's uh, quite big. Here uh, I list uh, various, sorry, uh, the, the, the lines here represent uh, the dimensions of the space. And uh, so here uh, we, have, we can have various um, hardware affecting the behavior. We can, ha we can have uh, then the stacked devices on top of the hardware. Uh, then we, I, I wondered whether file system, uh, the actual file system can affect how, how the IO control behaves and also some file system options that are designed to prevent, for example, some contentions. Uh, I also uh, was wondering uh, how the behavior is, uh, how, how, how the behavior changes uh, in different kernels. So that's another dimension. And also interesting is uh, to, to check how, uh, what is the behavior depending on the C group tree, whether we are working just with a simple hierarchy that uh, we have uh, C groups right below the root or if it's something more difficult and nested. So this is one part of the dimensions. Then we have dimensions uh, that are continuous, I would say, and those are the actual uh, attributes configured to the C groups. Uh, the, 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 the first group here, I would call them vector uh, uh, vector dim dimensions because uh, uh, we, we set it for e each individual C group. And there we can decide uh, what actually, what would be the weights, what would be the limits or possibly the IO latency. Those were my plans for the exploration of the space. And then there are the scalar, scalar or global attributes uh, where we can also tune the, the BFQ scheduler's uh, number of requests that it is allowed. This is basically related to the parallelism of the device, how, how, how many requests in parallel can be present in the IO scheduler. So that's also a parameter. And then, then we have the global dirty pages uh, threshold that is also configurable. And uh, also what is non negligible is the actual workload that uh, we, we want to uh, control. And again, uh, there are several other dimensions. Uh, we have the different IO paths. Uh, I don't mean any file system path, but basically how, how, the, how the requests pass through the stack. So we can have direct IO that bypasses uh, page cache or the buffered IO where yeah, we use the page cache or F-Sync, uh, yeah, which is just my name for kind of a, a buffered IO where we explicitly call F-Sync instead of relying just on hitting the uh, threshold. And also the swap IO, uh, uh, I, I spoke against it, but I thought it'd be interesting to see how it is. Of course, uh, at the dimension for all of this is whether it's a read or write. And uh, then uh, also another uh, type is uh, whether we are watching just uh, streaming, I, uh, streaming IO of uh, some big amount of data, or uh, if we actually operate on metadata operations that would be more susceptible to these uh, file system contentions. Again, and another, another dimension is, uh, the, is the, uh, the, uh, the IO scheduling uh, class inside the leaves uh, and uh, the 
the the internal priorities and again this is like a, a long, long axis <laughs> in terms of the possibilities and uh, another dimension are the whether we watch just a single threaded workload or some multiple threaded multiple threads uh, issuing the io so uh, this was how i first uh, imagined the exploration space and to, to uh, on the other side, there is also the measurement space uh, to detect or what would be the interesting thing uh, to, to watch and observe. So yeah, first thoughts where like we want to see the, the throughputs, like overall throughput to the device, and perhaps the latencies, uh, uh, how, how this scheduling affects the latencies uh, of individual uh, C groups. Uh, and also the proportions, whether they are really proportion to what we set in the weights and yeah many many other uh debugging informations that might be interesting for uh, some later processing so this is the measurement space uh and i arrived at this uh, uh, basically i presented at least uh, 17 dimensions uh, in the previous slides uh, and assuming each of them is only two options uh, so together uh, it would be that the space uh, would be very big uh, to explore completely uh, so I had to fix uh, some of the axes and uh, just watch uh, what I what I evaluated the most interesting at the moment so uh, I gave up on measuring on different hardware. I also uh, I also decided to use just the ButterFS and uh, only one kernel, uh, relatively recent uh, stable kernel from Tumbleweed, uh, plus some fixes about which I will talk later. And also I used a simple C group tree. From the from the policies, uh, so I have uh, tried to measure the BFQ proportional control policy and the cost based cost based uh, uh, proportional control. And I only tried basically two options: uh, the equal weights case and uh, uh, weights in the ratio three to one or one to three. <laughs> And additionally, uh, I also tried uh, not using IO controller at all, but only using memory limits uh, in these ratios. And the uh, workloads, uh, to have it somehow reproducible, uh, I, I created just a few uh, worker types. Uh, basically, uh, this is what I was um, or allowed, allowed, but also a bit limited by FIO, 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 where I, I actually don't know the pronunciation, FIO. Uh, so I had uh, two reader workloads and three wor writer workloads, uh, either for using page cache or not. And the writer was also, there was a separate type of workload when we explicitly called a sync every, uh, some every constant amount of uh, written data. So, uh, so that was the explore space uh, reduced, and uh, now what I've how I process the data. Uh, so uh, where um, lots of data to present. So I've um, <laughs> uh, drawn um, or plotted something uh, which reminded me uh, the creation flag. So I call it creation plot. Uh, so what, what we have here uh, uh, on it's basically uh, metrics uh, for the two competing uh, uh, C groups uh, and uh, the rows or columns represent the type of workload in the C group. And on the left hand side, uh, we see the total throughput to the device. And on the right hand side, we see the proportion of the throughputs from individual C group, or the, sorry, the ratio of uh, throughputs uh, between the C groups. Uh, and it's, it has logarithmic scale. So, uh, in the ideal world, 
So yeah, in the ideal world, uh, the, the left uh, left uh, bitmap would be just uh, all yellow uh, or white, uh, where we basically utilize the device uh, to the maximum. And on the right hand side, uh, it would be also all white because uh, that's the middle value. Uh, yeah, um, I'm not sure if I uh, said that. Uh, the, actually, the ratio is uh, a logarithm. So uh, if if it was white, the ratio would be one to one, which is what we would expect in the symmetrical case. So it would be all white. Uh, but that's not the case already for the symmetrical weights. And uh, uh, we can see basically that there are, <laughs> that's the reason why we have the correlation flag. Uh, it's quite arbitrary ordering of uh, my workload types that the for the uh, direct writers and direct readers uh, they always always lose to the uh, to the buffered IO so that's why there we see so um, strong uh, tints of either uh, red or blue uh, meaning that the ratio is really off uh, the ideal or not ideal like expected um, of the, it's of the expected uh, equal shares so this is the behavior with the bfq controller with symmetrical weights yeah uh, the picture on the right is not uh, all white because of uh, various reasons uh, uh, we were also discussing uh, that the io may not always meet each other on the device so that that's why it's not uh, all white okay so let's move to another picture. Uh, here, uh, we attempted to apply the weight uh, to the C groups. So in the, the expectation is that the right picture uh, should be all blue. Uh, and ideally, the blue should be the, the, the minus one uh, color. That is, the, the slow C group is three times slower than the fast C group. But uh what is the surprising case here is the white white square in the middle where he where we have the uh, buffered writer against buffered writer and uh, despite the weights are asymmetric uh, their share is symmetric where they have equal shares and that was actually the, uh, uh, the unexpected behavior and uh perhaps also a bug that, uh, that that has to be somehow tackled and uh, yeah as i said i'm not expert here but uh Jan Kara, uh figured it out why it behaves like this through the stack and uh sorry yeah okay we will show it later uh then he, for comparison we have the coast based model and uh, here again uh, we see the for, for the symmetrical weight uh, the, di the direct uh, readers or writers uh, uh, they basically are starving uh, in uh, competition with uh, the buffered uh, with the re buffered readers or writers so this is similar to the uh, symmetric case with uh, BFQ and here the, the scheduler was none uh, we used only the based model for the proportional control and here uh, I apply I've applied the weight uh, again a three uh, the ratio of three to one and we see that the, the blue uh, white square in the middle is here again and also there is uh, we see that there is no control between the writers and uh, readers despite uh, different weights for their C groups. So the cost-based model is also affected uh, by this not honoring weight. Uh, but yeah, we, uh, we did not focus on cost-based model controller. So here, I, I told that uh, uh, Jan Kara uh, uh, developed some uh, fixes for this. And here is basically uh the behavior of bfq controller uh on the on, on the uh, stable kernel plus uh, fixes from jan kara and we see 
that uh, the, the, the plot on the right hand side is actually uh, more blue. Uh, it's a bit of cheating to show colors and not numbers uh, because it's like in the middle, uh, it's not definitely white, uh, but it's also not like minus one, but it's uh, closer to the intended uh, proportion uh, pro ratio. So uh, this is, uh, I think, a good success, but still, uh, yeah, the patches are for review uh, in the upstream. Yes, and here for the comparison is a use just of the uh, memory limits and uh, and no uh, proportional I/O control. Uh, so uh, we see basically uh, that the, the cases for the direct I/O where the page cache uh, is um, the page cache is not used at all. Uh, they, they are quite uh, pr pronounced as uh, without node control. Uh, but interestingly, uh, when we watch only the for example, the yeah, the the, the buffer writers, uh, uh, the buffer writers or the async writers. So we see uh, that uh, they somehow honor the 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 intended ratio just by configuring uh, different memory limits. While, uh, yeah, and I think it will be more visible on the la last picture that it will be, yeah, that's now, I hope now you are familiar enough uh, with uh, the system of the plots. Uh, uh, so it is the last row where we can see uh, that uh, we, we somehow uh, didn't use the IO controller uh, and we used only the memory limits, but we see that the total throughput, uh, the picture is darker, more yellow, uh, we have somehow uh, sacrificed some throughput because of with, with the memory limits. So this is the overview of the Oh, yeah, or the representation of this of the space that was sampled and uh, showed uh, the behavior of the I/O control for these combinations. So uh, we are approaching the end of the talk. Uh, so initially, I talked talked about the configuration, which ideally uh, would be without some workarounds, but uh, we still have um, some of them because of the uh, API mismatches. The, for the expectations, uh, it's not as simple as just setting weights and expected the ratio. And expect the ratio. We have to think about uh, multiple factors uh, that come into play. And yeah, the experiments. Uh, the experiments uh, uh, show that the, the space to explore is actually quite uh, large. And uh, it was uh, it was uh, interesting to f figure out some way how to present it. Uh, so what, what is like the current next work? Uh, so uh, first, it is uh, to somehow resolve in upstream uh, the problem with the APIs, uh, so that uh, we can use systemd uh, nicely with uh, uh, both uh, proportional I/O control policies and don't, we don't have to care uh, about some workarounds and, and backport it possibly to Slash. Uh, then uh, those are, there are the BFQ fixes and th those are still under review. So if, if you feel like it, you can you can check it on the list, Linux block mailing list. And yeah, this is a, yeah, this is a big work from Jan Kara. So thank you to him or no, thank you to him. And uh, yeah, for the experiments, uh, I w wonder if uh, for the future might be interesting because I uh, was interested uh, how, for example, the, the the workload where we have more metadata operations, how would it behave practically? So that may be some future work. And uh, yeah, extra slides, uh, not. Mm. Yeah, so that's the end of the talk. Uh, thank you. There hasn't been any questions, but there is one that just popped uh, up. Do you want me to read it? Okay. 
or uh, uh, I, I can read it. Okay. So uh, since butterfs was used for benchmarking, did you have to deal with duplicate metadata that butterfs creates on rotational devices by default? In other words, if butterfs use duplicate metadata, the results might not be relevant for non-rotational devices. Uh, okay. So uh, I do, didn't have to deal with this, or I didn't deal with that. And yeah, of course, this all had, what I presented has to be taken with a grain of salt. As I said, I had to fix some of the dimensions. So yeah, perhaps the behavior with uh, no, yeah, I use rotational device. The behavior for not rotational device might be even different. And uh, yeah, I hope my experiments uh, weren't burdened too much with noise, uh, but still yeah, take it with a grain of salt. Do we use or uh, recommend using BFQ even for, for both rotational and non-rotational too? Uh, yeah, that, that's a good question. Uh, I am not definitely competent to answer this, uh, but I, I think uh, there were some, no, uh, because uh, there were some other benchmarks uh, that show that BFQ can be used by default, default for all, uh, but I am not sure if this landed uh, in Slice. Uh, I'm not sure if we have uh, Martin Wilk or some other, but uh, yeah. uh, so that, that's a, alas, it's not a question for me, or I can't answer it. That's yeah, sure, but uh, 